Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, it's uh, my pleasure to rise this afternoon or this evening uh, and speak in support of the Disability Services Restrictive Practices and Other Legislation Amendment Bill. And, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I want to commend uh, Minister Davis on the tremendous work that uh, she and her colleagues uh, and the Department have done uh, in bringing forward these uh, legislative changes. Uh, and it, uh, as my colleagues are no doubt aware, it's been a, it was my great pleasure in the first 12 months of government uh, to spend a considerable amount of time travelling uh, to various parts of the state with the Minister, and uh, not only visiting child safety service centres, but visiting many of the, the wonderful disability service providers across Queensland uh, in places like Cairns and Townsville, uh, Mackay, Bundaberg. Uh, we spent some time in Toowoomba and then many places around the southeast here in Brisbane. Uh, and, but a particular pleasure was some of the service providers in my own electorate, uh, like uh, the FSG group and the Southport Special School, where we spent time even before the election uh, visiting with the principal and visiting and speaking with some of the teachers and, and the students at that school, uh, and also visiting uh, the Musgrave Hill Special uh, Preschool. Uh, and and the, 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 the people that work in the disability services sector are doing some great work. Uh, but what they don't meet, need, Madam Speaker, uh, is the, the onerous burden of uh, extra paperwork and, and uh, the, the layers of complexity that uh, were brought in by the previous government uh, when, uh, when the first uh, legislation to regulate the use of restrictive, pr restrictive practices was introduced in 2008 uh, in response to a report by the Honourable William Carter. And, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I note that uh, back in um, January of 2010, uh, the member for Anala uh, mentioned in, in a, a speech to the House that she had visited one of the service officers in Meribara. Uh, and she talks about sitting with one of the workers and, and, uh, and, and, and explained how one of the workers had said that it actually took six months to complete a comprehensive assessment in relation uh, to a positive uh, behaviour support plan. Uh, but she went on to say that uh, look, th these plans are important because they're dealing with uh, vulnerable and, and, and challenging clients, which they are indeed. Um, but she also said that she'd rather have a fully comprehensive system and not scrimp on anything to make sure that we get it right. Uh, well, the previous government have certainly done that. That's the Labor way. Layer upon layer of red tape. Uh, layer upon layer of regulation. Uh, layer upon layer of, of expense, increasing the administrative burden uh, on those people that are working on our front lines. And we've seen that in so many areas uh, since we've come into government. Uh, you don't have to go far uh, you, but just to look at the health system uh, and the challenges that we saw coming into government with uh, the, the huge waiting lists and ramping of ambulances at hospitals uh, and uh, the, the redeployment of, of staff into administration areas uh, rather than frontline services like nurses and doctors. And, and uh, certainly as uh, Minister Davis and I travelled around the state uh, in that first year that I was uh, her assistant minister. Uh, the stories we heard from many of the staff in those child safety service centres and disability service centres was what a relief it was to have the layers of administration removed above them uh, and to actually be able to have direct access into the department, get answers on day-to-day -day issues and, and be freed up uh, to get on with the important work that they do. And, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, it is just so important uh, that we support this legislation uh, and that we understand the need to reduce uh, the burden of red tape. Uh, and this is just another area where our government, the Newman government, uh, is working to reduce some of those burdens uh, on, on our frontline workers uh, who, uh, who are, are delighted to see money being directed away from unnecessary admin and more funds going into real service provision. Um, the, the other thing that this bill does, and, and I, I do want to touch on this particularly, but. Um, it, it also uh, introduces uh, a significant level of accountability and care. Uh, one of the blunders by the former government in drafting the legislation previously uh, was the omission of any requirement for service providers to report on their use of restrictive practices. And that lack of reporting is a real concern, especially given the potential risks and deprivations associated with the use of restrictive practices. Service providers themselves have noted that a lack of restrictive practices is, is a, a particular concern and a significant oversight of the previous government. And I note that uh, the committee received submissions from uh, the Anti-Discrimination Commission of Queensland, uh, and they, they made the point that um, the rights of disadvantaged people can be infringed when restrictive practices are imposed on a person without their consent. Uh, these, human, these are fundamental human rights that everyone is entitled to have respected. 
the right to equal recognition before the law, the right to access to justice, the, the, the right to liberty uh, and security of the person, the, the right for freedom from exploitation, violence and abuse, uh, the right, uh, uh, rights of the integrity of the person and the rights of their privacy. Uh, I note also that, uh, that United Care, in their submission, uh, they, they, they raise concerns about the lack of clarity and the lack of uh, accountability uh, around uh, the, these prescript, uh, prescriptive um, practices. Uh, and then also the National Disability Service uh, Office of Queensland, uh, they actually wrote to say congratulations to the Minister and the Department of Communities, Child Safety and Disability Services for their work to review the regulation. Uh, and uh, in, in respect of the authorisation of restrictive practices within current legislation. Uh, they went on to say that they support the amendments to the legislation uh, because they believe that there need to be adequate safeguards in place for people with disability, uh, that, that, that we need to provide safeguards for the workforce and reduce the cost of compliance uh, for organisations, uh, that there's a need to deliver clearer and uh, unambiguous guidelines to stakeholders and to improve the statutory responsiveness and outcomes. And, and I, notice, I note in the committee report um, that, uh, that there is also an obligation in there uh, to report back to the families of those uh, people who are being uh, looked after uh, and where uh, restrictive um, practices um, uh, are applicable. And uh, what are these restrictive practices? Well, they're things like containment, seclusion, chemical restraint, physical restraint, uh, mechanical restraint and, uh, and, and actually restricting uh, people, people's access to objects. Uh, and it's, it's sad that uh, we need to have these practices in place. In fact, today um, I was just speaking with Vicky Batten, who is the uh, general manager or the CEO, I should say, of uh, the Family Services Group on the Gold Coast, uh, one of the largest disability service providers in Queensland, whose uh, head office is in my electorate. And on a monthly basis, they look after some 3,500 clients a month uh, they look after 300. Uh, they actually live, uh, look after the living needs, the daily needs of some 300 clients across the state. Uh, and Vicky's, Vicky, Vicky's heartbeat in this is just outstanding uh, because she herself describes the organisation as a large organisation with a large heart, uh, an organisation that's truly committed to providing freedom, social justice, and growth for all people uh, within our community with disability. And uh, Vicky's comment to me was that uh, she would rather that uh, we didn't need these restrictive practices at all. In fact, uh, their organisation is committed to a process where they, they seek to, to employ none of these restrictive practices. They actually train their staff uh, to work with, uh, with their clients in such a way that they would rather foster a greater sense of understanding and care and compassion. Uh, and in treating those uh, uh, clients with great respect and great care, they find that many of the behaviours uh, can be uh, well managed. Uh, and many of those behaviours uh, can actually be turned around and many of those people within their care uh, can enjoy much uh, greater levels of uh, care and support. In fact, uh, FSG uh, state that, uh, uh, that, that one of their goals up front when you visit their website, they, they talk about their passion and their passion is uh, one of actually wanting to make a real difference in the lives of their clients. Uh, their passion is uh, to, to enhance the lifestyles of the people uh, that come uh, w within their scope of service position. Uh, um, and uh, what an incredible organisation they are. Established back in 1979, uh, they've celebrated more than 30 years of service to both the Gold Coast uh, and right across the state of Queensland. And of course, uh, some of the other organisations in my electorate that I'm particularly proud of that, that also share the view these views and are welcoming uh, the, this, these legislative amendments uh, are organisations like the Southport Special School established back in 1970. Uh, and last year uh, we saw the delivery of some new facilities there, a new library, new classrooms, uh, new staff facilities and a kitchen. Uh, and this particular school looks after some 200 young people uh, under the age of 18 uh, on a daily basis. Uh, there's the Musgrave Hill Special Preschool with uh, some 80 or, or 90 young children that it takes care of on a weekly basis. Uh, and, it, and it's also a great pleasure to have the Arundel Riding School for the disabled within my electorate, or in fact I should say the member for Broadwater's electorate, uh, but uh, we both enjoy a great association with the Riding School. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of the Newman government. Um, I, I'm absolutely uh, uh, 
pleased to, to be part of a government that's really committed uh, to delivering frontline services, to diverting the money away from unnecessary red tape uh, and being highly accountable to the communities which it serves. And I believe within this legislation we see yet another example of our government's commitment uh, to move the funds and the support uh, where it's most needed. And uh, it's my, my great honour to stand in the House tonight and uh, commend the great work of the Minister and her the department. The member's time has expired. I call the member.